guys, welcome back to another video. We have traveled enough over the last couple years that we started looking into what the best state for residency is. I grew up in Washington, Emma actually grew up in Michigan. Uh, particularly with us being mobile, we can be residents of any state. For us, it kind of came down to South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, continuing with Washington, or possibly Texas or Florida. There are a lot of benefits to some of these states, but the, the simplest one to get residency in, and that made the most sense was South Dakota for us as a whole thing. And that's that's a completely separate topic. It really wasn't hard though. And with no state income tax and really low excise taxes and things like that, there's a lot of benefit. Now, Washington does not have a state income tax, but they do have pretty high excise taxes and other fees and, and things that just don't agree with. There's a lot of politics and nonsense here. So one of the things that we were looking at, especially when we're buying a, a big motorhome, is where does it make the most sense financially for us to register our RV? When we went and became residents of South Dakota, we had spent a few weeks there and we just, it was definitely the right decision. Such friendly and warm people, just great folks all around. And when you actually call them up, you could actually talk to a real human, which is not something that I've ever seen, especially not with the state of Washington. So we, we bought our RV knowing that we were going to register it in South Dakota, but we didn't do a whole lot in the way of research. We kind of looked it up and figured, okay, it's, it can't be that difficult. Then our temp tag expired and we were like, hey, what in the world is going on? So after some calling around and actually chatting with the Department of Revenue for the state of South Dakota, here's what we found out. One, you can do it through the mail if you need to, or you can just go right on in. You're going to need to bring just a few things. We actually made copies of these things or sent the originals out to them. So you're going to need of course a copy of your license or both of your licenses if two people need to be on the title a copy of your title if it's titled out of state or the manufacturer's certificate of origin that shows the dry weight and all that good stuff you'll need that of course the title and registration application we submitted also with a custom license plate application and a bill of sale just showing how much we spent in taxes which we paid arizona taxes along with the original purchase price and all that good stuff so we sent all of that paperwork to p.o box 394 in deadwood south dakota 57732 i called up and chatted with a woman named susan she was so cool i really can't get over that because you just you don't meet people like that we paid one dollar per day for our 15 day permit so it was 15 plus tax and then at that point we're good to go and then as for the fees of course that's gonna vary a little bit depending on whether or not you have taxes owed or whatever the case might be however they'll give you a call and actually let you know how much it's gonna be then they send your plates out they're very quick which is great they'll send the title and the plates very quickly which is identical i think to how they do the driver's license i we went in and left the same exact day within 20 minutes with a South Dakota driver's license. We didn't have to wait for anything to come in the mail, which is so rare. Straightforward once you know what to do. It's not that difficult. When in doubt, call those guys up. They're really, really cool. It's not quite as convenient as when we bought in Washington and registered in Washington State. The dealership did all of our paperwork for us. However, we've saved over $50,000 off the MSRP of our particular unit. It made so much more sense to buy it out of state, wait for it, and just do a little bit of legwork ourselves. The stress really came in by just not being prepared in advance and waiting for something and being concerned that our rig was going to get towed because our temp tag expired because we didn't know enough not to wait. Also, this is kind of an interesting one. This is the first temp tag that we've had that actually goes in the bottom right corner of your windshield. Now, I don't know if it's the bottom right corner of the inside or the bottom right corner of the outside of the window, but that's kind of interesting. Every other tag that we've had goes in the back where a normal license plate would go. Uh, hopefully this helps somebody else in the future. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Like and comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.